Hi everyone. Welcome to Fat to Thin Senior r and I'm Raven. I'm 76 years old and I had gastric bypass surgery on December 16th, 2019. Medicaid approved the surgery and last week I talked about my time in the hospital again and the soft food I've been eating and the discovery of new tastes. In this vlog, I'll be talking about rethinking things, my attitude towards success and when you should back off, you know. If you're curious, please join me on this journey and continue to watch and please comment. What's up, Rowley? You gonna come over here? <laughs> Okay. One week ago on the puree diet, I was not feeling hungry. I'm still not feeling hungry. Um, I felt like Thanksgiving full all the time. I've gotten to the point where I'm not feeling Thanksgiving full and I think I'm beginning to figure out when to stop eating. I've come to absolutely hate that feeling of just extraordinary fullness. And then, which of course meant that I ate too much. I ate probably one bite too much and which caused me to throw up for hour after hour after hour. There was one morning I threw up from like 10 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock at night and I just kept throwing up and throwing up. I know the food never came back up but there was this liquid <laughs> that came up uh, and it was just a horrible feeling. It's like you're just too full. You want to stick your finger down your throat. That kind of fullness, you know. I've gotten to the point now where I've gone two days where I didn't throw up. I managed to stop just before that crazy fullness feeling. Then otherwise I'm down to maybe throwing up once per day <clears throat> for about maybe an hour. But I think I'm getting better at recognizing when to stop. You know. And there's been a couple of times where I've I knew I should have stopped. I mean, I knew it, you know what I mean? But I just took that one extra bite. And that was the wrong thing to do. I just need to do, learn how to do this. Let me see. I'm still having enough a problem getting enough water and protein in. I haven't made 90 grams of protein since the operation. I think I've made 65 at most. I have made on occasion eight glasses of water, but it's usually around five or six glasses. <clears throat> um, I've, I've been rethinking my food. I don't know why, but I've been watching international street food videos and thinking they all sound really good. The thing that they have in common is that they're all fried. Excuse me, I got a cold. Um, but they look great, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, I just need to get out of my food rut. I don't know what to eat, what to buy, what to not buy, what, you know, all kinds of things. Um, I've been sipping liquids every two and a half minutes. I've been using my phone timer <clears throat> to let me know when two and a half minutes is up because I'll probably go half an hour, an hour without even thinking about drinking anything because I'm full all the time. Uh, I also stopped, I started eating so that there's two and a half minutes between each bite. That way I don't have to reset the clock, you know. But that seems to let me know, or at least I get the idea in my head that, you know, you better stop right about now. You know, even if it's only two, three bites that I've taken, uh, I need to stop. And, I, and I'm and i beginning to get there, okay? There's hope for me yet, you know what I mean? Uh, 
But I've been doing the two and a half minutes to thing after after I eat, then I wait a half an hour, and then I go to the two and a half minutes for the drinking phase. So that way I've been managing to get quite a bit of water in, not even thinking about it. Of course, the, the beeping of the phone is driving Rowley crazy, but hey, that's the way it goes for now, till I get into the real habit of it. And I think I'm beginning to get a handle on this, I can't say it's dumping syndrome, well, maybe it is dumping syndrome, but it causes me to throw up, so same difference, right? I think I'm beginning to get a handle on it and get it together. And then... I decided I would look at the paperwork again that they gave me at the clinic and it says somewhere that each stage could last anywhere from two to six weeks. So I was thinking last week, oh my God, I'm behind in what I'm eating and I should be eating more, I should be eating more solid foods, that kind of a thing, but they're saying it lasts, each section lasts between two and six weeks. So. I'm not behind. I'm, I got to do what my body dictates. And I need to learn that, <laughs> you know. Today I'm feeling pretty good. My heart st beat is still up a little bit, but it's not bad. Uh, I went to the doctor on Monday and he said to drink a bottle or more of Gatorade per day. Um, and as a result, I'm actually feeling better. He said the problem has been is that my electrolytes are very, very low. I couldn't get the prescription filled for um, potassium and I couldn't get the prescription filled for nausea. I, I get my prescriptions at Walmart. They wanted a thousand dollars for the anti-nausea medication and they wanted two hundred and fifty dollars for the potassium and the reason is is because my insurance doesn't want to pay for more than one round of those particular meds per month. Of course, if I don't get them, you know what happens, right? So that's why the doctor said drink Gatorade um, because it's got the potassium in it, it's got the magnesium in it, it's, you know, and it's cheap. It's cheaper than $1,000 and it's definitely cheaper than 250 you know. So I've been doing that. Thank goodness for this doctor, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Anyway, the insurance company is also holding me up on on my heart specialist. When I went to the emergency room last week, uh, they told me get myself to a cardiologist this week. Of course, that didn't happen because my insurance hasn't approved it yet. Even though the doctors, more than one doctor, has put a rush on this to see the cardiologist. He's in the same building that all of my other doctors are in. Um, I still haven't seen him yet. I haven't even received the referral yet. <laughs> and this is America. Okay. Anyway, I'm forcing myself to eat, eat real foods. <laughs> I air fried, I don't remember if I told you this or not, but I air fried a chicken thigh that I had, um, what do you call, marinated. And then I pureed it um, and threw in some mustard and mayonnaise. And I pureed it in the Nutribullet. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. It only lasted me three meals, but it was fabulous. So I'm thinking maybe I should cook up another one, and you know, because that was good. And I bought some baby food. That's the nastiest stuff I've ever put in my mouth. Or well, put in my mouth in years. Anyway, it was nasty, nasty, nasty. It was Gerber turkey and rice with sweet potatoes. It was terrible, <laughs> terrible. I don't know why babies. Well, babies eat it because they don't know any better, right? Uh, <laughs> and and after all, no wonder babies reach for the chicken bone, you know, to chew on, you know, because at least it's got some flavor. You, this this was terrible. I threw some spices, salt, pepper, that kind of stuff into it, and it was nasty. I managed to get down two ounces of it and I just threw the rest of it away. It was terrible. So I've got 20 some odd bucks worth of baby food which I am going to take back because I don't even want to try a second one. It was that bad. <laughs> you know, shucks. I could use a chicken bone right now to chew on, you know. Uh, 
I used to take whatever we were, when I, my kids were small, my kids were babies, I used to take whatever we were having for dinner and just mush it up with a fork or whatever uh, and feed it to them. Uh, I've had the spices, seasoning, I mean like tomato paste, you know, you can't cook tomato sauce without seasoning in it, right? I put everything in it. And as far as I can tell, the spices and the seasonings never hurt those kids. Um, they don't hurt, they didn't hurt any of my kids. They don't hurt any kids from anywhere else in the world because you got to consider that um, no, nobody eats like us. You know, we're just Puritans, I guess. And then you look at the baby food jars and they are, they've got all kinds of crap in them. I gotta stop my dog. They get all kinds of garbage in them. I mean, even the ones that say um, organic. I just can't believe that stuff anymore. You'd probably be better off. Whatever you're having for dinner tonight, mash it up, feed the baby. It'll probably be healthiest for them. And you know exactly what's in it, you know? And then I also noticed that every single baby food had some kind of sweetener in it in some form. Are we teaching our babies to just like sweets? They don't care for salts or umami flavors or what is all sweets. I mean, they had some had fruit, fruit juices, sugar, but it's still all sweet. I mean, you know, I, I didn't give sweet stuff to my babies. And they turned out pretty good. And make your own. It's a hell of a lot cheaper. You know exactly what's in it. And that's that. I have found, though, that I still don't like bananas and oatmeal. Now, I have to tell you a story about this oatmeal thing. When I was a kid, I don't remember how old I was a kid, um, my mother gave me some a bowl of oatmeal to have for breakfast. I didn't want it couldn't eat it, couldn't stand it, didn't even like the smell of it, and I still don't like the smell of it. Um, so there I was sitting at the dining room table, and mom has got this bowl of oatmeal in front of me, which I refused to eat, so I sat there all morning. The next day I get up, there's a bowl of oatmeal in front of me, and I think it was about the third day that I realized that there's a drawer in this dining room table. So I scooped all of the oatmeal into this drawer. Well, as it turns out, oh, let me see, it had to be at least five, ten years later. I went to visit my mother and she still had this dining room table. And I was looking at it saying, you know, this is a really nice table, whatever, and I opened the drawer and there is this dried oatmeal <laughs> in the drawer. So here I am, you know, in my 20s now, trying to scoop this stuff out of the drawer without her knowing. Oh, she must have known. I don't know. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she never opened the drawer. But anyway, just before she died, she was 94 when she died, she told me that she never, ever, ever gave me the same bowl of oatmeal. She always made fresh oatmeal <laughs> in the morning because she was determined I was going to eat this stuff, and I never did never did <laughs> so I gotta say stubbornness runs in our family so you kids out there of mine who, who are stubborn you know where you got it from okay as for the exercise and other healthy stuff I'm supposed to be doing I've been walking twice a day minimum of 15 minutes so I'm getting in at 15 minutes each time so I'm getting in a good half mile yesterday I walked a mile um, so that was pretty good. And my heart rate is still up, um, but it's not going up like it was. I mean, now it's up to 112, 115, maybe it'll go up to 125. And this is on a slow walk, walking the dog, walking Rowley. And, uh, but it's not as bad as it was. It was going up to 142, 152, you know. And all I was doing was walking 20 feet, you know. So it's it's getting better, and I think that, believe it or not, that the Gatorade is, is really helping much better than the potassium.
that I was taking the pills and when I because I couldn't take them I kept throwing them up so what good were they anyway you know as for my body impressions I've been looking at at stuff I got on the scale this morning I'm 201.6 pounds I think but I realized I was I put the scale on the floor and I'm standing there buck you know and, and I'm looking down at the scale and I realized that I could see past my stomach to my toes my toes was sticking out I could see that without making any effort at all to kind of lean forward you know and look over and see what the, the thing is that was shocking that was definitely shocking I was surprised <clears throat> and I've been going through all my old clothes to see what fits and tossing out the stuff that doesn't because I don't ever want to go back to them so I don't want to keep them I gotta get some new bras though I started wearing sport bras that I happen to have because they're tighter than my regular bras and I've thrown some of those out panties are a different story which I won't go into which reminds me of a story about my junior high school I was walking home from junior high school. That was a very long time ago. I was walking home in the winter time and I lived in New York City and my junior high school was on the west side and I lived on the east side of Manhattan so that's a good hour almost walk from the west side to the east side. Anyway, the elastic on my panties broke. They were blue if I remember correctly. And maybe they was rotted from too much bleach or whatever. Anyway, the panty elastic broke. I tried to keep my knees together while I'm walking, you know, you know how you do. But eventually I decided, okay, I'm going to let them fall because they were coming down to my knees. And soon they were going to be hanging from below my skirt, you know. So I let them fall and I let, and I walked out of them like nothing happened. As far as I know, nobody ever saw it or at least nobody said anything <laughs> so, you know but we won't discuss panties anyway my shoes are beginning to get loose I never considered that my feet would be fat but of course they are everything else is fat why wouldn't feet you know my rings don't fit anymore nothing fits you know that's okay I'll get new stuff that's gonna be fun so anyway there's uh, the last of the Rowley report. You heard him barking a few minutes ago. He's doing great. He's not nearly as skittish, but sometimes he still is. I had a conversation with him about coming. I would say, come, like that, right? And he would stand there and look at me, and then, you know, I, I knew he knew what it meant, but he wasn't doing it, right? So then I was, I was saying to him a couple of nights ago, he was feeling really trashy from this cold that I've managed to develop um, and I said come and he wouldn't come and so I just got in the bed and then so he comes over and he's trying to climb up on the bed but he can't because it's too tall right so I picked him up and I stuck him up on the bed and then I decided we were gonna have a conversation about come <laughs> you know, so I talked to him about come, you know, you, you you should come when I say come, I mean it, you know, blah, 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 on and on and on and on. And his eyes went like, you know, oh my goodness, you know, she's not happy, you know, anything like that. Ever since that, I said, come. In fact, I don't even have to say come, I just do the hand gesture and he just comes. So, seems he was upset that I was upset and decided to become a decent boy. Now this week he's decided he's got to bark at everything. We have to have a discussion about that of course. And then he's got developed another habit. I don't know if he's had this habit already and he just didn't express it. It's when he gets his dinner, only when he gets his dinner, it's not his breakfast, he will take out two or three or four little kibbles and he'll put four of them on one side of his bed and four of them on the other side of the bed and then put two of them behind the bed and then he'll go and eat the rest of his dinner. I don't know what he's saving that for. Maybe he thought somebody's going to come get it. Maybe he's serving it to me. Who knows? I don't, <laughs> I don't know that much about dogs. Anybody else out there know about dogs can tell me, okay? Because I'm trying, but you know where it is. 
I made him some steps at the bottom of the bed out of some cardboard boxes, but he still wants me to pick him up. He won't and put him up on the bed. He won't go up the steps. Hey, I just live here. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, to sum up, I'm feeling a lot better. I really am. And Raleigh is, and I are learning each other. We, we're beginning to be sociable. I think the honeymoon phase is probably over now. We're pretty close. I'm still glad that I did this operation. I'm sorry I can't go traveling around the world and eating street food. Um, but that's okay. That's okay because I'm getting where I want to be. I'm looking forward to the time, forward to the me that I want to be, that I am inside and was just too much fat on the outside to see. Okay? So anyway, that's it. Please share, like, subscribe, ring the notification bells, and check out the descriptions. But I didn't put anything special in there this week because I haven't seen anything special this week. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you have a great day. Take care of yourselves and blessed be.